The Catholic Church changed its stance on same-sex couples. The Texas governor signed a bill that will allow police to arrest migrants. And actor Jonathan Majors was found guilty in a domestic abuse case. That's some of what we'll get to on The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Jeff Pierre. It's Tuesday, December 19th. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. At number one today, Pope Francis will allow Catholic priests to bless same-sex couples. The Vatican issued formal and definitive permission yesterday for priests to give blessings to same-sex couples. It largely reversed a ruling from 2021, which confirmed a ban on these kinds of blessings. And it expands on a statement of support for these blessings issued by Francis in September. The new guidance made clear that the blessings should be kept separate from marriage. It said priests can't wear traditional wedding vestments or take part in ceremonies, formally recognizing same-sex unions. But it explicitly gives priests permission to carry out the blessings. This is a milestone for the LGBTQ plus community. The Catholic Church has 1.3 billion followers around the world, and the church has previously said that any nod to same-sex unions would be equivalent to blessing sin. Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill allowing police to arrest migrants. That is number two. The legislation was signed into law yesterday. It gives state police the power to arrest migrants suspected of entering Texas illegally from Mexico. It's expected to go into effect in March. Yesterday in Brownsville, Texas, Abbott spoke about why he thinks the bill is important to the state. Biden's deliberate inaction has left Texas to fend for itself. The authors of the United States Constitution foresaw a situation when the federal government would be inattentive to states that faced challenges at their borders. And in response, they inserted Article 1, Section 10 to the United States Constitution to empower states to take action to defend themselves. And that is exactly what Texas is doing. Abbott, who's a Republican, has taken increasingly strict measures to stop illegal immigration into Texas. His efforts have included placing razor wire at certain locations and installing a chain of orange buoys in the Rio Grande River. Both efforts set up legal battles with the Biden administration. This latest effort could also be subject to legal challenges over who has jurisdiction over border enforcement. Entering the United States, other than through an approved crossing, is already illegal under federal law. Number three, an earthquake in northwestern China has killed at least 116 people. A 6.2 magnitude quake rocked a mountainous area at around midnight local time yesterday. It brought buildings crashing down on people as they slept. State media reported that at least 300 people were injured. The death toll is expected to rise as rescue efforts continue today. Videos showed firefighters digging through debris in search of survivors, but rescuers warned that freezing temperatures and the high altitude terrain were making it difficult to find people. Number four, a volcano erupted in Iceland. The eruption began last night near the town of Grindavik. Video and pictures showed plumes of red smoke billowing from scorching white lava. You can see some of the dramatic footage in our newsletter. Here's Robert Donald Forrester III, a tourist who saw the eruption. I'm very excited to be here in, in this place, in this, in this time, and just being able to see this natural phenomenon happen, just seeing lava emerge from the ground Even if it's in in a particular continent such as this, it's just fascinating to see just nature in action. I just, it's just like something from a movie. The eruption could last up to 10 days. Officials said it isn't clear how much damage it'll cause, but Grindavik's residents are safe. They were told to leave the town last month ahead of the expected eruption. Number five. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. That was the scene outside a court in New York yesterday after Marvel actor Jonathan Majors was found guilty in a domestic abuse case. Majors attacked his then-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, in the back of a car in March. Yesterday, he was convicted of one harassment violation and one misdemeanor assault charge. 
The jury found him not guilty of a second misdemeanor assault charge and a more serious charge of aggravated harassment. Marvel Studios dropped majors following his conviction. He previously played a prominent role as Kang in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The actor now faces up to one year in jail and up to three years probation. His sentencing is scheduled for February. Number six, you could soon get a payout from Google. The company is shelling out $700 million to settle an antitrust lawsuit. It was brought by state prosecutors over the high fees that Google charges app developers. The details were revealed in a court filing yesterday. Most of that money will go into a fund that will be divided among around 102 million eligible consumers. And you're probably wondering now if you're one of them. Well, there are a few requirements. The legal address on your Google Payments profile must have been in a U.S. state, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, or the U.S. Virgin Islands. And you must have used that profile to buy an app from Google Play or made an in-app purchase through Google Play Billing. And it only covers payments made between August 16th of 2016 through September 30th of 2023. If this sounds like you, it should be easy to get your money. Most people will receive automatic payments without having to file a claim. And at number seven, a vase bought at Goodwill for $3.99 sold for over $100,000 at an auction. The vase was discovered earlier this year by a Virginia woman named Jessica Vincent. She liked how it looked and suspected there might be something special about it. So after picking it up for just a few bucks, she did some online research and she was stunned by what she found. It was an ultra rare piece from renowned Venetian architect Carlo Scarpa. And last week, Vincent sold the piece for just over $107,000 to an unidentified private art collector. Richard Wright, the president of Wright Auction House, described the vase as a gift from the thrifting gods. You can see a picture of the colorful vase in the 7 newsletter. Just click the link in our bio. And if that doesn't inspire you to head to your local thrift store later today, I don't know what will. All right, you're all caught up. But one more thing. If you haven't already, please take a moment to rate and review the show. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm Jeff Pierre, and I will meet you back here tomorrow. Tomorrow.